Oh, hey. My mouse is the little falling man. That was used as an easter egg in, uh, what's it called? Uh, Witness. There was an ink splotch that was shaped like the falling man from Mist, and now I've seen it in Mist. At long last. Alright. Wait. Oh no. It does it, has it always had that problem? I think it always has that problem. Oh no, did I just- did it- did it- oh no. I think it had nothing to do with the whole, like... Oh man, I'm probably gonna get comments about that one. It seems like it had nothing to do with me minimizing then. It's just that, yeah, in the recording it, it appears, unless the preview's wrong, it appears that my mouse is in a different spot on my screen than what you guys see. This is me highlighting the, the painting. I'm highlighting the middle of the painting. Weird. Maybe I can fix the resolution or something? There we go. It was resolution. The game was in- the game was running in a weird resolution, apparently. And so that led to the mouse being shown, shown in a different spot between the two. Unless the problem's only in the preview, in which I sound like an insane person right now. But okay. So there's more books I can read here. Looks like there might be- is there four of them? One. Two. Three. I should have opened them all to make sure they all open. I think I have, though. Alright, so it's just gonna take a while to go through all those. I'm gonna... choose to not marathon through them all in one go. For the sake of our... selves. Let's, uh, go back to exploring for a bit, and I'll come back periodically to read another book, I think. Uh, because if I marathon it, that might be like... 30 to 60 minutes straight of reading. So we have strange boxes. Hello? Okay, you can toggle them between red and green. We strangely have the same boat that was in by the docks, it looks like. We have another one of these guys. That's number four, I believe. And we were changing the direction of the tower before, right? There's the tower. So I can point that at something if I want to, but I don't know what I'd want to do yet with that. Can I go down there? Seems like a dead end at the moment. Okay. This is, uh, I would rank those as ineffective, ineffective rails for people to, to avoid falling off. Another one of these guys, we have a rocket ship. And, I'm, and I believe that's, uh, switch number five. Trying to keep count. Alright, I believe one of the things they added in this version was a day-night cycle, so it might get dark. I'll turn this light on then. Okay, so we have a series of switches covered in symbols we don't recognize. Well, I do recognize as in, like, I can say what's on them, but... Don't have anything, any meaning to assign to them yet. So we have snake, eye, tick, anchor, arrow, leaf, cross, goose, maybe, water bird of some kind. There's switch number six. Not even really flipping them with any knowledge. I'm just kind of going for it and seeing what happens. What's down here, huh? There's something so charming about the, the particular aesthetic of 90s sound effects. I'm not entirely sure why. Hello? Giant underground generator room thing. One, two, three, four, five of them. I broke it. Hooray. Okay. Oh, did I, did I piss it off? 
Seems non-responsive now. Oops. Yeah, they were both going up before, right? Then it's like it shut down. Okay. Save this one for later, perhaps? Oh. Did you just reset? You made a lot of noise when I walked out. You did not reset. The right one's not moving. I think it was moving the first time around. Let's see if I can find more information before I futz around with that anymore. Just maybe. Not a very big island, is it? What, we've had six of those so far? Seven. There's one down there. Oh. Okay, I can set you to a time. Oh, you can't. There's no click and drag. You just click on it to do it by one interval. Okay, so at some point I'll figure out a time. Some sort of clue for a time, and I'll put it into this thing, and that'll make probably... Maybe not a bridge. Maybe it'll just... Maybe a bridge. Maybe. But I believe that's number seven. If I'm counting correctly. Eight. I'm gonna feel really silly when I realize that I've miscounted. Howdy. Oh. An air pressure measurement. Oh, this one does have click and drag. All right, left is loose. Or neither has any effect on the on the air pressure on that thing. Maybe I need to plug something in first. Three-digit number, and a safe. Okay. What do you mean? Isn't the most used password in the world password? And combinations are one, two, three? <laughs> I don't think we have a number yet, so let's keep going. Just trying to get the lay of the land. Ooh. Atmosphere, look at this. That's a, that's a neat visual. Yeah, not regretting playing this version so far. The graphics are still, even in the, it's funny how the, thinking of it as a remake, because of course the graphics are super dated, but it has a nice aesthetic to some of it. Just got a little bit of that like Star Wars Episode One syndrome where they're like, this graphic, <laughs> computer graphics will never look better than today. And then literally the next year it was like, oh no, what did we do? The liquor in, Resin in the first Resident Evil movie looks terrible. So I think I found seven. And I think this was the entire island, right? So... One... Two... Might as well just count again while on my way back. Three... Four... Five... Six, seven. I think that's all of them. We'll see if I'm right or not. It says, enter the number of marker switches on this island into the imager to retrieve the message at Atris. So Atris must be the name of the person writing all those, those journals. And imager is likely the thing in this basement down here because it's the thing that creates images, quite literally. Seems like a safe bet. So I guess just zero seven, right? Well, I put in the number I had. So I am going to assume that means I'm wrong. Which is completely reasonable to think. I'm sure there's more island to check out. 
but I, that's all the ones I've found so far. So just keep seven in mind as a number, and as I continue to explore, we'll update that number as we go. Might start doing dates soon, considering lack of other clues. What's up here? Tiana. Got an achievement called Remembering. Tiana. Is it the name of somebody from this world? Could be a few things. Could be could be a character from this world who died. Or a nod at a character from a previous game, or even like a family member that maybe died during the production of the game or something like that. It's hard to distinguish between Easter eggs and story elements sometimes. But for now, let's assume Tiana is an in-game character. Can't go up there. Yeah, I don't think I'm missing much else around here. It's just a tall tree. Not sure why this t tree in particular has like a whole thing dedicated to it. Because there's trees all over the place. But that one's almost treated like it's special. I could put times into this thing, but that seems like a pointless endeavor because it seems like the three times I've been given are all related to the, like, what thing, that thing that's probably a time travel machine. Okay, we've poked around for a little bit longer. Let's do one more book. That one's called The Channel Wood. The Stone Ship. Ace, I think it says. The something ace of... These are unreadable, basically. How about you? Emmett was the first to live on the rocks. He named them the rocks because that is what they were, a group of sharp rocks clustered together in the middle of a large sea. This was where Emmett lived. He enjoyed his life. Emmett would occasionally swim to nearby rocks as if... as it was never too far of a distance. One day, another person appeared on the rocks, for no apparent reason to Emmett. Emmett named this new person Branch. Emmett and Branch quickly became friends, swimming and hunting for fish together often. Emmett showed Branch the simple cave in which he lived on the largest rock. Soon, Branch discovered a place where he decided to live, also on the same large rock. The sun always shone brightly in their world, and the water was, o was always dazzlingly clear allowing them to see almost to the almost to the deep ocean floor which surrounded them although the sun always shone it was never too hot for the boys a night a light breeze o always came from the north and cooled the area down one day while branch was swimming and having fun in the water he noticed another boy swimming branch brought the new boy to emmett to find out what to call the new boy emmett said the new boy which should be called will Will was soon a part of the group, and all three of the boys swam and enjoyed their perfect world. At least, that is the story I was told when I arrived today on the island. Emmett, Branch, and Will were surprised to see me at first. But even before the night ended, we were all becoming good friends. Today, the second day, on this newly created age, a strange thing happened. It was not strange to me, but the three boys did not understand what was happening. While I was relaxing under a large tree on one of the smaller rock islands, it began to rain. It was a nice rain that lasted for about an hour in the morning. I explained to the boys that the rain was not harmful, yet they obviously still feared it. Before going to sleep tonight, I told the boys I would leave the following day. I told them that while I was gone, I would make a, I would make a surprising change in their world. They didn't understand. Not that I expected them to. I still do not fully understand what happened today. I was experimenting with the art, testing the limits of the rules as dictated to me by father. I attempted to create a boat by riding it into the world. I thought everything was planned correctly, yet somehow the boat had become gripped by the rock and broken in half. Although this test did not turn out as he hoped, I now have answers to a few, a few questions my father never answered. As for the boat, I can see the boys enjoying it anyway, and with, and with that I am pleased. They have played on it all day. Even though the boat cannot move, I have enjoyed studying from it. 
It is a much sturdier platform than the jagged rocks. In the course of my observations, I have learned some very interesting things regarding the solar system of this age. Submersible lamp. Look at this weird cog thing. So we're now we're establishing that, that these worlds are apparently... It seems they're fictional. That seems to be why they're... That seems to be why they're books, specifically. It seems like you can write directly into them and change the existences of their contents, basically. Not entirely sure why they're called ages, though. The nights are absolutely beautiful here. I have made note of it and named a number of constellations that pass above me. Also during the night, I caught... I catch glimmers of light from the horizon, which I have not been able to discover if it is created by some natural phenomenon or by additional people on far-off islands or rocks I should very much like to discover which. I rather suspect it is additional people, which would explain the appearance of Branch and Will. Let's see. Yeah, that, that would make sense. Yeah, he, so he's wondering if there are those people on the other rocks, which would make sense because people just seem to spontaneously come into existence. Although you did just write a book into existence, so who knows. The rain today was slightly heavier than usual. Just when the boys are getting used to light rains, a small storm arrived. They were frightened of the heavier rain, not to mention the thunder and lightning. If rain has never fallen here until recently, as the boys tell me, I would like to discover why it is falling now. Regardless, I have decided to return home for a short while. I have also been thinking of some plans for a lighthouse that I hope to construct soon. I think that perhaps by shining a bright light toward the horizon, it might prove my suspicions regarding additional inhabitants. They would be curious about the light and travel to discover its source, if they have the means. It seems like the other one was talking about tree people. I'm not, I'm not sure if that one was talking about this world or not. There was reminiscent features, and we have notes from the from the people of the first story that seem to indicate that, that maybe that was here, or at least this was their home base, and they were going off to somewhere else to get to Channelwood. I don't know if we're I don't know if we're currently sitting in Channelwood or not for sure, but this story seems to very specifically talk about where we are right now because it's a series of jagged rocks surrounded by ocean, which is fitting to what we're reading so far. And there's a we have a sunken ship nearby, and that's clearly tying to elements of this story, too. And especially the lighthouse, and other elements like that. I returned with many tools that I will need for construction of the lighthouse. I have decided that once the lighthouse is completed, I will leave for some time, and let the world's own imagination have control. We have worked three weeks on the lighthouse now, and are making great progress. The rock that we are building on seems to not be as secure as I would like. I have had to alter my plans slightly, but those alterations pose no real problem. The boys are quite strong, and have been helping me immensely. I estimate construction will be done within two days. The lighthouse is finished, and we are all proud of our creation. The boys are amazed at the structure wrought from rock with their own hands. That evening we powered up the generator, much to the boys' dread at first, and shined a great light to the horizon for many hours. I stayed the night in the top of the lighthouse, and in the morning awoke to observe the sunrise without my being coated in the chilly blanket of ocean dew I had become accustomed to. It was Will who first saw the girl. She was swimming not far from the boat where Will was getting ready to hunt for fish. Then Will noticed a man not far away from the girl. Emmett was very pleased to meet additional neighbors. I feel pleased to leave this age. I have set in motion events that have nothing to do with with writing or the art that will have a far a more profound impact on this world than I could have ever written. I think and it just ends. It just ends with I think, which is the beginning of a sentence. This is the stone ship age, bird's eye view. So it's just a single jagged rock with a spiral platform. Interesting. There's planks going between the rocks. There's a lighthouse out in the distance. There's a ship. Nothing else really matches directly with what's going on around here. In fact, the it's called the stone ship age because the ship is literally sticking out of the side of the stone. Like it's got fused with it on accident. Oh. I think of it as... 
I think of it this age as a gift to myself that will wrap up and open someday in the future. Only to discover that it has changed so much that indeed it is a surprise. Besides, I have yet another new age that awaits me. It seems I'm going to need some way to travel underwater in this new age, and so much planning is in order. It has been ten years since I left this age, which I have since called the Stone Ship Age. Upon returning, I cannot believe the changes that have taken place. The original three boys have grown into adults, and there are many new faces that I do not recognize. Branch told me that it has not rained for seven years, and the cool breezes are back again. They are all very content, and have been serving me with new foods and showing me new materials they have discovered. It even seems they have found gold somewhere. I see it in many forms around the island. My lighthouse has been kept in perfect condition, and it looks as if they have tried their very best to keep it so. Yet I have noted that the entire rock it was built on has sunk approximately 40 or 50 centimeters. After a wonderful visit with my old friends, I wonder aloud with them what things will be like here in another 10 years. We have constellations and we have anchor. Am I supposed to draw that constellation, I wonder? That's worth considering. I will now open up paint real quick. I think the, the audio cuts out. That's, how, that's when you guys can tell that I'm minimizing the game, I suppose. There we go. So I've saved an image copy of what we just found called Constellations. There we go. So one, I'm curious if I should type that constellation into the, uh, the weird panel thing I found. And also we have the anchor, which is one of the buttons, apparently. Oh, there's a bunch of these. Okay, recording these might be a bit much then. So there's a constellation for every single one of the things outside. That's probably important. Okay. So if I press eyeball, what happens if I press two of these, first of all? Okay, they both stay lit, interestingly. I thought maybe you'd only be able to light one at a time. Did I remember you when I was counting all the all the things? I hope I did. There's a ladder going over there. I missed you before. Okay. Another thing I can interact with, but doesn't do anything yet. Probably until we establish power or something. That raises a new question, too, because, uh, does that count as one of the switches? It has the same switch that all the other surfaces have, but it's not on, on the podium and everything, so it probably doesn't... I'm thinking it doesn't count. Maybe. Let's see here. So that's the eyeball. Two central dots, then slightly offset dots. I'm curious to see if going in here causes the eyeball thing to react. Uh, uh oh. There's my mouse. Where's my... I don't have a mouse. Why is that happening? I have a mouse here. Then I go in there and I lose my mouse. There it is. I have no idea what I did differently, but okay. That's kind of what the eye constellation looks like. Kind of. Maybe you're supposed to type them into there, maybe not. Yeah, you can see what I was going for there. 
Be a little hard to be certain about that one. And I still need to figure out where I want to make you point. So if I point in a certain direction, something might happen. But until I can figure out what that is, then we don't really know what to expect. But it'll just kind of point in different directions. The lighthouse? I assume you're the lighthouse. My first clue was was thinking telescope, but that story had a lighthouse in it, so I'm kind of thinking that. Well, I'm curious to try out these times we've heard about. No, don't get back out. What? Whoa, what? That was weird. <laughs> I got up and stand direct stood directly on top of it. No? I'm trying to drag it. There we go. Okay. Uh, the first time I have recorded is... Of course it's 1984. Listen, they felt very edgy when they wrote that. Oh my goodness, 1984. Okay, uh... 10.04 a.m.? No. Crap. So your time... Oh, it treats all of time as a single spectrum. Okay. Uh, 10 a.m. There we go. October 11th. October 11th, 1984 at 10.04 a.m. Should be good to go. What have I done? <laughs> ah. Turn the lights out. Try it again. Okay, so I'm gonna assume that matches up with one of the constellations we saw. It's sort of shaped like a kite, with these three ones being the brightest ones. Nope. That's what happens when you hit W. So, leaf. Okay. Leaf. So I'm going to guess it's a three it's a three button combination where if I find those three if I look up those three uh dates in what I thought it was gonna be a time travel machine, but it looks like it's just a bunch of stuff that goes into where it looks into the sky. If I find the constellations via those dates, it probably tells me which three buttons to press in this room. Ah. All right, well, it, this this mechanic's fighting me a little bit. Tr Come on, drag it down. Okay. I think I'm I'm being gra I'm gravitating towards these lights, thinking I need to interact with them, but I think I can just kind of drag it from anywhere. I'm not sure if these lights even actually matter, actually. Okay, next up is January seventeenth, twelve oh seven. Crap. But a high-pitched beeping crossed with this serene music is a bit of a contrast. Um, 5.46 a.m. Alright, January 17th, 12.07, 5.46 a.m. That should be all correct. Kind of looks like a question mark a little bit. With like two up here, one, two close together over there, one on the bottom. Kind of. 
That weird camera angle that keeps happening when I get up is because I keep hitting W instead of just waiting for the animation to end. And that leads to a very strange little twerk of the camera. Let's see if I can recognize what we just found. There it is, snake. Snakey, snakey. You were down he- nope. There you are. Alright. Snake leaf. One last date to try. There we go. It's gonna be November... 23rd... 97.91 There we go. 6.57 p.m. Double check real quick. November 23rd, 9791, 6.57 p.m. That should be correct. I'm gonna guess that's the beetle. That's probably the beetle. But I'll double check to be sure. If anyone forgot how I got those when we were in the tower area after the elevator, uh, there was a plaque that had three dates. Yep, that's a beetle. Or the tick. Whatever it is. I could actually make it out from the constellation that time. Well, that's a trippy effect. Oh, the real one's coming up. Ah. This ship rose from the depths and so did the real one out there. That's interesting. I bet you raise new possibilities. Do you have one of these switches on you? Is that why the my number was wrong? How do I get on? I just walk on? Okay. There's clearly a gap, but I can't... I can't unlike many protagonists of video games, we seem to be smart enough to just walk over the gap instead of being like, I can't do it without a ramp, it's impossible. Or like, we don't even need a jump button. Our character just knows how to use his legs. Can I open this? Yep. We got ourselves another journal. Hello. Seems this takes you to another location. Some location that has a lighthouse in it. Let's leave that for later. It might be time to dig into those books, then. I can't close this. Nope. Uh, yeah, I might want to read those books, because I think I'm running out of, uh... I might be running out of other things to do on this island. We might be moving on to a new location, actually. How did I get the switch count wrong, though? Am I crazy? Is there another one hiding somewhere? Should I double-check the tower or something? One... Two... Three... Four... Tentative five, maybe. Five... Six... Seven... Eight. And I try... Wait, I, I tried seven, didn't I? I think I typed seven, but there's eight. Welp. I must have missed one. I think it was the one in the middle of the hallway. So I think I tried... I think I tried seven before. My bad. I'm so happy there's a, there's a flashlight toggle. I was... I thought I was gonna have to open the menu every time. That was a noise. Never want to hear that again. Catherine, my love. I have to live quickly. Something terrible has happened. We need 
It's hard for me to believe. Most of my books have been destroyed. Catherine has one of our sons. I suspect Agatha, but I shouldn't leap to conclusions. I'll find him and Cirrus as well. Oh, I should have known better than to have left my library unchecked for so long. Well, I've removed the remaining undamaged books from the library and placed them in their places of protection. You shouldn't have to use the books until I return, but if you've forgotten the access keys, remember the tower rotation. Oh, and don't worry, Catherine. Everything will be fine. I'll see you shortly. Oh, and erase this message after you viewed it, just to be safe. Erase this message after you viewed it, just to be safe. Well, that hasn't happened. Not unless I am Catherine. Am I Catherine? I mean, I, I could be Catherine, technically. Yeah, maybe I am Catherine. I don't know who I am. Maybe I am the wife returning to discover this distressing message about how something has gone wrong with our sons or something. So that's Atris. It's directed towards Catherine, so either... Either she didn't pick up that note, and she didn't listen to him, or I'm her. And it sounds like the sons may have gotten into some bad business. Seems like he, they attacked the, uh... It sounds like they attacked the, um, books themselves, which I think... He says he hid the undamaged ones, but there's a, bu but there's a whole bunch of undamaged books just sitting there. So I'm guessing that the undamaged books he hid are the ones that have the portals in them. And that's the point. He probably hid them in these various puzzles and stuff like that to keep them hidden away. Did that room... Ha! Huh? That room's like a two-dimensional image. That's funny. Once you get past the doorway, everything past that's a two-dimensional image. You can see it pop into being a 3D model. Boop! Just like that. Optimization! That's neat. So I'm guessing he hid all the portal books away. The ones that give you, take you to ages. And that's why I had to uh, open up the secret one inside the ship, for example. And so they, the other ones must be hidden in similar locations. Okay, so let's keep going through the, these books then, because... That one wasn't entirely necessary, since I might have been able to recognize the, uh... I might have been able to recognize the, um... Constellations without it, but it clearly helped. So these help me, might help me solve the puzzles around here. Future Bridge. This one just looks like it's, uh, construction plans for Channelwood, which is probably a tree place we can visit. 